Hello everyone, welcome to Coders Camp. We are at 29th day of May Lead Code Challenge and the problem we are going to cover in this video is Yen Queens 2. So if you remember on 22nd May Lead Code Challenge, they have asked us the question of Yen Queens, which is very similar to this question. Actually, this is the parent question of that. And there in that problem, they have asked us to return the alignment list, that is the list of string that represent the alignment or the placement of queens in the matrix. Here, a little variation, it is asking for the number of alignments or the number of distinct solutions to n queens problem. So, which is very, very similar to the previous problem we have seen. And I have used the same solution and exact same code we have used for n queens problem. But just a little change that instead of returning the list, I have returned its size. So our list will be having the solutions, possible solutions or possible placement of queens. So here they have asked the number of solutions. So I have returned the size and it actually worked and submitted in six millisecond, I guess. Yes, it is. So yes, you can watch the video about how n-queen problem works and, and use the same solution as well as I have did here. But placing the queens and sending the list is kind of too much work for this problem. So we are going to use the DFS technique and backtracking again to solve this problem with the same approach we have used in our n queens solution. So I'm not going to tell all the stories again here. You can watch the video of n queens in order to understand how DFS works and how backtracking works to place the queens in a chessboard. So here again, as I said, we are going to use DFS and backtracking. But instead of placing the queen, we are going to identify whether it is safe to place the queen in that place. And if we come up with a solution, then we are going to increment the count and return the result. So let's understand it before getting into the coding part. So this solution is going to perform DFS and backtracking to check every possible position is safe to place the queen or not. And I'm not going to explain DFS and backtracking here in this video. So we are going to iterate through a recursive solution and check whether every position is safe or not. If we placed the queen in this particular row, then we are going to call a recursive DFS again for the next row. And again, if we could place with all the conditions, then again, I'm going to call for the next row. And once we place the queen in our very last row, then we are going to iterate our answer to one solution that if we can place our last queen, then that means we have reached our solution. So here we are going to check whether a place is safe to place a queen or not. So how do we know that it is safe? For example, if I'm going to place a queen here, then there must not be any queen in the same column or in its diagonal or in its anti-diagonal or in its row. So how are we going to check? It is easy to check the row and column because if it is in the same row or same column, then we are not going to proceed further by placing the queen in this position. So how do we check the diagonals here? So if you see the diagonal starting from 0, 0 till here, the delta or the difference between the row and column are equal. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2 or 3, 3 share the same differences. If suppose ignore the central diagonal thing, compare these three diagonals, 1, 0, 2, 1 and 3, 2, they all share the difference of 1, which is nothing but 1 minus 0 is also 1. 2 minus 1 is also 1 and 3 minus 2 is also 1. Similar way, these diagonals also share minus 2 as their difference. So we are going to find the difference and maintain a set of diagonals. Let, let us name, us a, name that as diagonals. And we are going to place the difference. Now the difference is 1 minus 0 is 1. So I'm going to place the difference. If Again, I'm encountering the same difference. Then in that case, we have already placed a queen in that diagonal. So in that case, we are not going to continue our solution. The same way, check the anti-diagonals. So here, if you see the anti-diagonals in this direction, they all same share the same sum. So if you see 2, 1, 1, 2 and 0, 3 
share the same sum or total. Same way if you see these two diagonals, they share the same sum. So by using that, we are going to add the rows and columns and place the values. For example, I am adding 2 and 3 and place 5 here. If suppose I am coming to the last row and this cell 3 comma 2 and I check the sum is 3 plus 2 and I am going to check whether it is present in the set or not. Yes, it is present in the set. So which means we have placed a queen already there in 2 comma 3. So we are not going to continue this path and backtrack to where we have started and go for the further solutions. So this is how this algorithm is going to work. So let's go to the coding part now. So here is a code. I have declared three sets, which is occupied columns, occupied diagonals one and occupied diagonals two, which is nothing but our actual diagonal, which is going to store the value of row minus column and diagonal two is anti diagonals, which is going to store the values of row plus column. And this is going to have already occupied columns values. So in our main method, we are simply calling a DFS with starting row and the count and again, n is nothing but the input. And here comes a DFS method. So clearly we are iterating each column in our for loop. And inside that we are going to check whether if the column is already present, which means did we place a queen already. So in that case, we are skipping that iteration and going back to the next iteration. If not, if it is not present, then we are going to check both the diagonals. So as I said, for one diagonal, we are going to check row minus column and other diagonal row plus column. And we are checking whether in occupied diagonals one, this value is present, then we are going to skip it. If not, if it is not present, then we are going to check the other diagonal as well. If both the diagonals and columns are not already present, which means that place is safer place. So in that case, we are going to place a queen in that particular place. So here we are checking another condition whether a row is equal to n minus 1. That is whether we reached the last row and all these diagonals are also not present, which means in last row we found a safer place. In that case, we have reached a solution, then we are incrementing our count. If not, we did not reach our last row, then in that case, we are going to add the current column to occupied column because we are placing the queen in that column, which means it is occupied. Also that into a diagonal, both the diagonals that it is occupied because we are placing a queen there. And finally, we are going to call place the queen for the same DFS method for the next row and the same count and the n. So here these three steps are present because in general DFS, once we do a backtrack, we first add the columns and if it is not, we cannot continue, then we have to go backtrack to the next solution. In that case, we did not place a queen in that column. So we are removing the previous rows column, which is nothing but if suppose we are placing our queen in the first column, first row, also in second row. So now these first row and second rows will be added that uh, we placed our queen. So it will be added as already present diagonals and columns. So we are coming to a third row and we realize we cannot find a safer place in a third row. In that case, we cannot further proceed placing our queen in that solution. So in that case, we, did, we should not place queens both in the second row and first row as well. So these will help us to remove the added values. So we are simply removing them to recover our solution. So yes, that's it. Once it is done, our count will be having the number of solutions. So let's run and try. And yes, so let's submit. Yes, the solution is accepted. And runs in 3 milliseconds. That is better than the previous solution we have seen. So thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe and let me know in comments. Thank you.